how did Flex Coat begin? Well, uh, let's see. Um, I was building, I had gotten into building custom rides. And, um, and I was traveling a lot. You know, back then I was teaching school, so I had off three months. Back in those days, we had off a full three months. The thing I liked to do was I'd go to Miami and hang out down there, go down to the Keys. I'd go down to Louisiana and hang out down in Grand Isle. And um, I would visit any rod builders I run in, could run into, you know. And there was no, no manufacturers in Texas that were building rods. One of the problems I had was I couldn't find a good finish. So all the guys that I'd visit with, some of them wouldn't even tell you what they were using. Some of them were using boat epoxies. And you know, before that, people were using varnishes, but varnishes had took several coats and didn't hold up that good. Epoxies, we kind of knew that epoxy was, was good, but all of it cracked and it wasn't designed for fishing rides. You know, that was real frustrating for me because uh, I'd build a pretty rod and, and put epoxy on it and then uh, go out and use it a few times. And right when you first started using it, you could hear it cracking. And something I've always done is, you know, if I've got a problem, I try to solve that problem, you know. And I started, uh, you know, looking at all different epoxies that were available and uh, contacting companies that uh, had chemists that worked for them that made, uh, made epoxies. And, I just stumbled into the right place. So I talked to them about making a clear flexible epoxy and this is one of the first places that can make a 50-50 clear epoxy. And they said, uh, you know, I said, you, could you make a flexible epoxy? And uh, they said, yeah, we, we can do that. You know, to even get a sample, I had to buy 100 gallons. That was a big deal. And because uh, I couldn't use but about eight ounces in a year maybe. Uh, and so I went ahead and, and bought the 100 gallons and the shipment came in to me. I put it in my living room and I had some little one ounce bottles and I packaged up these little one ounce bottles of epoxy and, uh, and I put a little quick print wrapper, paper wrap around it and uh, uh, so I, you know I, since I was a rod builder I hung out at the sporting goods stores in Houston and there was a lot of rod building going on down there uh, and I took my first little bottle down to Sporting Goods Incorporated. I, I knew the buyer down there, he was really, you know, that was a big store. They had salesmen lined up trying to sell them stuff. Most of them had a suit on. So I knew the salesman. And so the salesman said, hey, Roger, what are you doing? What are you doing down here? Uh, I've got this finish uh, for coating rods. And I showed him that rod. And, I mean, he didn't look at it for 30, 10 seconds. He said, oh, he said, yeah, give me 12 dozen, you know. And uh, I said, well, Henry, I ain't got but 36 bottles. And he said, well, give me what you got and bring the rest later, you know. I went back that night, stayed up all night packaging up that stuff. Well, I had to teach school the next day. So I went in there and, uh, I, you know, after I taught school, I went back over to Sporting Goods. Well, when I got there, the, all the salesmen said, Roger, where you been? Where you been? We sold all that stuff by 11 o'clock. And I said, oh, well, you know, maybe that's the way business works, you know. Put a product out there and people buy it. I didn't realize what that meant. Then every week I started bringing stuff in there. Uh, I mean, they, they were just selling it like crazy, you know? And um, then people from all over the country started coming into Houston for whatever reason. And uh, they would go to Sporting Goods because they knew that was a big, big store. And uh, they would buy the finish and take it back to Miami and California and New York. I called old Walter up down there at Sporting Goods. I said, hey, what's the AFMA show? He said, Roger, that's the American Fishing Tackle Manufacturers, you know. He said, man, you ought to go to that. So, you know, I had already done some shows selling my custom rods in Houston. So, you know, a booth cost you, you know, 200 bucks, 150 bucks. So I thought it couldn't be too bad. And I'd already sold a lot of finish in Houston, so I had some money. Man, when it came time to go to that show, the guys that next to me, I, all I had was a, a table a flex coat sign, I had two pretty fishing rods, and I had a two ounce kit and a price sheet with one item on it, you know. That night I couldn't sleep. I said, people are going to be pointing and laughing at, you know, whatever. What's this guy doing here selling rod finish? At this show, you don't sell rod finish at this show. Well, the next morning when I came into that show, well, I walked in 100 yards from my booth, and I could see a bunch of people standing around down there, you know. So when I got there, they were standing around looking at my booth. And what it, what, what it all amounted to, was the whole world was looking for rod fitting, and I had it. And so that's there. That's the start of Flexcoat, and uh, we've been in business 40 years now.